Hello, Street Pete here. Today I'm bringing you a video for beginners or people who have some experience but are still trying to learn the basics of the game. I'll not have time to go into detail with every aspect that I bring up, but I'll try to give you an overview of different aspects that you can focus on to improve at Age of Empires 2. In the future I'll make videos focusing more on the smaller details of these aspects and you can also find lots of good videos about them here on YouTube. I'll start with the four different resources. These are wood, food, gold and stone. You can gather wood from uh, trees, you can gather gold from gold mines, you can gather stone from stone mines and lastly you can gather food which you can gather from example goats, rhinos or boars or that category and deer or zebras or ibex um, which are all the same. Each resource can be used for building units or technologies or buildings. One of the most important technology in the game uh, are the aging up technologies. You can age up to four different ages. We have the Dark Age, which is the one we start in. Then there's the Feudal Age, the Castle Age and the Imperial Age. Each new age unlocks new buildings, units and technologies. To advance from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age, you'll need 500 food, which you can see up here. Then you also need two buildings um, from the Dark Age. And the buildings from the Dark Age are the lumber camp, the mining camp, the dock, the barracks and the mill. To advance from the Feudal Age to Castle Age, you'll need 800 food, 200 gold and two Feudal Age buildings. The buildings in Feudal Age are the market, the blacksmith, the archery range and the stable. To advance to the Imperial Age, you need also two buildings, which can be the siege workshop, the university or the monastery. Alternatively, you can just do one building if you do the castle. And then you also need to get 1000 food and 800 gold to be able to click up to Imperial Age. Going through these different ages, I have also mentioned most of the buildings in the game. An important one that I haven't mentioned is the town center. Town centers can help you create villages and villages help you getting more resources and you can use those resources for units, buildings and technologies. You start with one town center on most maps, but you can only build more town centers starting from the castle age. Different units can be cre created in different buildings. For example, in the archer range you can create archers skirmishers and cavalry archers. These units can then be upgraded once you reach the appropriate age. For example, now we're in the castle age, so archers can be upgraded to crossbowmen, but if we were in the feudal age, you can only make archers. In the imperial age, you'll then be allowed to upgrade these to arbalest in the archer range, if you already have the crossbowmen upgrade. Another thing is that you get technologies in the blacksmith. For example, for archers, you have the technology called fletching, which gives you one more range and attack for all your archery units. It's worth noting that so far I have talked in general terms. For example, normally you need to upgrade the spearmen to pikemen, but in this case I'm playing as the Ethiopians, as we can read here. And if you are the Ethiopians, they get the pike upgrade for free. And there are other um, civilization differences. Some civs can make eagles, for example, in the barracks, which we don't have as the Ethiopians. And some civs don't have, for example, the crossbowmen upgrade. That could, for example, be the Spanish or the Bulgarians. So you have pretty much the same units for most civs, but there will always be some differences in the technology tree. We can also see the technology tree in here where you can see for each sieve which upgrades they get 
and which units they can make. In this technology tree, you can also read what each unit is good against. For example, it says that the heavy cavalry archers is strong versus slow units at long range, but it's weak versus elite skirmishers and units at close range. And then it also specifies which upgrades each unit needs to become stronger. There are also some hidden bonuses. For example, the pikemen have a bonus versus cavalry units. Which means that if you can see you can see the stats here and see the pikeman is not very strong by itself. But it has bonus damage that helps it perform a lot better versus uh, cavalry units like for example knights, which have a lot more HP and attack, but in a fight versus a pikeman, the knight will still struggle since the pikeman is a counter unit to the knight. And in general you always have to take into account what are counter units to each other. Sometimes it's pretty clear, sometimes you need to have experience with the different units to really be able to tell because there are hidden bonus uh, damage that you don't always know about. I've gone over some of the different aspects that can help you as a player. One thing that's also worth to know about is the fact that you can set your own hotkeys. To do this you click on this cogwheel from the main menu and you click on options and then, then you go to the one to the far right and it says hotkeys. This one you can make your own hotkeys or see the hotkeys that the game has for you right now. To change one, for example if you want to be able to create villages with a different key, you click on villager and then change selected. I have mine as A for example since that's an easy accessible one and villagers are one of the units that I am making the most and I'm making them every game. In general you want to set up your hotkeys so that the units or buildings or technologies that you need the most are the keys that are the easiest accessible. To give you an example of this I'll show you here in game. If I press E and B I can create a barracks, if I press E and Q, then I can create a house. These are pretty fast keys to access because my hand is close um, to the left side of the keyboard. And same goes for example, farm is E and F, which is also something that's close. I have chosen the most important things, like I said before, to be where my hand is. On the other hand, you don't really need uh, some buildings. That could, for example, be a wonder. You don't need a good hotkey for this because it's not a building that you're going to be making very often. And there are other examples like this for things that are not as necessary. For example, it's more necessary to have a farming or mill hotkey than it is to have a market hotkey. Even if both, of course, help, but you want to Make the ones that you make the most the closest to your hand. I have mentioned how creating more villages helps gathering resources. And because of that an important aspect of the game is to keep your town center running. So you can make a lot of villages and therefore get a lot of resources. If you're not uh, creating villages from your TC, we call that idling your TC. And you want to minimize this idle time as much as possible. You can check your idle time with the program called Capture Age or you can go to your recorded games which you'll find if you go to the main menu, single player, load game and then you go into a recorded game. So if I for example select this one, click load replay and then you can just click on your town center, speed up and watch where you have some idle time. As I said, the less idle time you have, the better. Ideally you have zero idle time, but that is very hard, especially if you're starting out at the game, so don't expect that. But the more you can do to minimize this, the better you'll be as a player, because you'll be able to gather more resources. However, that brings me to another important aspect, which is actually using those resources. Because if you aren't using the resources, you might as well not have gathered them in the first place. Because if your opponent is managing 
to spend his resources better than you, he will be able to get more units and buildings out on the field and that could mean you lose the game. So therefore you have to make sure to always try to spend your resources. If you're having way too many you need a way to spend them fast. For example if I have 20,000 food I want to be able to maybe make some units that cost uh, food. Maybe I could make the light calf. In this case I do have a lot of resources uh, but in general in a game you'll probably not uh, have <laughs> this many resources and if you do it's because you're doing something wrong. A way of spending the resource is like I said to, to make units and it's important that <clears throat> for example if you make uh, stables that you actually use them. Uh, in a real game you won't have this many resources so spending for example 175 wood on a stable means that you also should get something out of that stable. So in general you want to keep your production going. This is not always the case you might not want that unit uh, like you might only want it for a period of time and then you want to transition into something else but it's a good thing to generally be aware of using your buildings if you aren't uh, using them then again it's it's a bit of a waste and you also may want to make sure to get out many buildings if you for example have a lot of resources if you sit on just one archery range it will take a lot of time to make uh, let's say we want 50 archers. On one archery range that would take so much time and we have the resources anyway. So we want to make more archery ranges to be able to create as much as many units as possible in a short amount of, as time, of time as possible. Also something that helps in that regard is to make control groups for your buildings and it can also it can be for TCs, it can be for archer ranges, it can be for stables. So if I, if I try to um, create from every building manually that takes a lot of time I have to click on the building either with a hotkey, I'll, for example that's W for me, it leads me to the archer ranges and then I have to click A to make a crossbow man and I could click on another one then click A on that but this is quite slow. Instead there is the option of for example double clicking if all your buildings are in the same area you can double click them. If you then press control and then press a number it could be any number. I'm just using one here. Now my archery ranges are in the control group one. Which means if I click one and space then I go back to the archery ranges. And doing this I can, for example, hold down shift, I can just click on the crossbowman and it will spread out across all the buildings making 5 units every time I click. That helps a lot speeding up my production. In a real game you might not have the resources to make 5 crossbowmen at, one, uh, at once from one building. In that case I would just press 1, space and then press the hotkey for the crossbowman, so A. And that way I can still spread them out across each building. I'm just making one uh, at once instead of five, which I would be with shift. This helps a lot in games uh, to be able to create from different units, uh, different buildings at the same time. It also helps because I can, for example, if I'm fighting up here with some army, I can just click back and without even looking at my ranges I can keep creating more units. Another aspect that you'll definitely hear a lot about if you try to improve at the game are build orders. Basically build orders mean a specific way to assign your villagers to their task and the order in which you do that. For example it's very standard to put 6 villages on sheep at the start because that makes you able to constantly create villages. And while if, if you have 8 you can also do that but then they start walking into each other and that will mean you get a less resources. Like I said before this video is more to show the general aspects. In other videos I'll look more into specific build orders. For example if you want to find a build order for making scouts. And you can also find these uh, build orders in other channels on YouTube.